118 floors high and towering nearly half a kilometre above Hong Kong. This hotel takes the high life to a new level. The man in charge of the 300-room Ritz-Carlton Hotel is Simon Cooper, who's head of Asia-Pacific for Marriott Hotels. The purpose of this hotel, you've spent an enormous amount of money on it. Uh, it's, a, it's your flagship now. Will it ever make money? Yeah. <laughs> Tough question. Obviously, it depends upon you know, uh, your definition of making money. It will be cash positive. It, I think it will do extremely well. It positions this entire building. The ICC center, which we're in, as you know, is over 100 floors of offices, enormous shopping center. It's a transportation hub for Hong Kong. So there are many, uh, <laughs> many parts of the, to this building. And, of course, the Ritz-Carlton on the top really, in, in a way, positions the entire complex. This also reflects the Marriott Group's growing position in Asia. Right now, 70 hotels under Marriott's various brands are under development in the region. We know Asia Pacific is the fastest growing area, but how does that affect the way you are planning for the company? The key thing you try to do in a fast growing market like this is figure out and really have some discipline around which brands you're going to use. Because Marriott has 20 brands and it would be, you know, if they don't all fit, certainly not into the key markets of China and, and India, which are the two largest. So we're working with about uh, six brands in China and about five brands in India at the present time. But they're demanding a different type of brand structure. Certainly they, they demand a, a, an adaption of our brand. So, for example, uh, our courtyard hotels, which typically in North America and Europe are suburban, cr clean hotels, often drive-up motel-type uh, structures. Uh, over here, our courtyard is a full-service brand. So why bother with the uh, so-called different brands, and why not start merging them? Because it seems to me that one brand in the US or Europe is basically another brand here in Asia. The reality is that all brands, ours and our compet competitors, move up when you move to Asia. The bar is much higher in Asia. I mean, the money went where? Did it go sort of... Did, did every, every bit costs everything, doesn't it? Well, when you're here for the construction, you know where the money went just to get, to get supplies up. Right. Just to get bricks, cement, mortar, you know, this high up. And, you know, you're nearly half a kilometer high here. And just that uh, is obviously expensive. But all of the finishes here, all the designs you're going to see, you know, all by, you know, world-famous designers. It really has to be the quality of the finish and the quality of the design. Important food and beverage. We traditionally think of you know, the balance between what the hotel makes in its restaurants and its bedrooms. In, in very important, especially in Asia, your food and beverage positions the hotel to the community. So we're walking here through uh, the Italian uh, restaurant. We have Italian and Chinese, both designed by Spin out of Japan. I'm told it's quite difficult to get a table here. I'm delighted to say yes. <laughs> Does it help if I know the president of the company? It helps a lot. <laughs> no expense was spared here, but in the current climate, cost is one thing you dare not ignore. Let's talk though about China and inflation. Inflation's rising, whether it's food or labour. It's rising the, raising the costs everywhere, isn't it? One of the things we're trying to do as we design our hotels for the future is realise that labor costs particularly, which is about f typically 50% of the cost in a hotel, that labor costs especially is going to be under pressure over time. What is your biggest challenge? Biggest uh, long-term issue is going to be talent. We're all competing for that well-educated Chinese person who speaks probably pretty good English or some other language. There may be glittering interiors, top-class restaurants and that view. If vertigo doesn't put you off staying here, the price might. One night's stay starts at nearly 600 US dollars.